Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem is not really a poem, actually. It's the excerpt of a libretto, an opera libretto, I wrote in collaboration with uh, Juhi Bansal uh, for a project that we started a few years back in which we decided to write an opera about Ada Lovelace. Um, for those of you who are computer scientists or work in the tech field, you might know that today is Ada Lovelace Day. And who is Ada Lovelace? Well, Ada Lovelace is considered the first computer programmer. Uh, in the 19th century, uh, Ada Lovelace had the met uh, Charles Babbage uh, in a, at a dinner salon, at a salon event that uh, Babbage hosted at his house. Uh, she was 17 years old. She came with her mother, and they were introduced. Um, at the time, Babbage was giving a lecture about the difference engine and then also commenting about the analytical engine, the machine that would have been the first computer had he finished it. In the course of that discussion on that particular evening, uh, Babbage and Ada struck up a friendship. Um, and partly it was because Ada asked really incredible questions that suggested that she really did understand what lay at the heart of Babbage's vision. In fact, so much so that over the years, the two of them continued to collaborate, and Babbage would come to Ada um, at a particular point in his life where someone had written, uh, an Italian uh, mathematician by the name of Menebrea, had written a very extensive and thoughtful review of Babbage's work on the analytical engine, but it was all in Italian. Babbage knew that Ada was fluent in Italian and a number of other languages and entrusted in her this task to translate this mathematical review into English and have it published. Um, Ada took on the task, but then appended her own notes, which were four or five times as long as the original text. In fact, her notes go into far greater detail and include, uh, among other things, a vision of the machine as being you know, capable of producing art and, and literature as a tool for creativity and not simply for scientific calculation. And she's credited as the first programmer because she also includes a full um, description of an algorithm uh, for calculating Bernoulli numbers, um, and which is considered the, the first time someone had set out to describe a step-by-step -step process that would be used by a machine to execute and arrive at a set of solutions. So informally, it was a program. Um, and so for these reasons, and a few other reasons that you can find in her very detailed notes, um, we champion Ada Lovelace as the first programmer. Not the first female programmer, but the first computer programmer ever. Um, so in honor of Ada Lovelace Day, I thought what I'd do is I would read the text from one of the arias that appears within this original um, and as yet unfinished opera. We, we did a version of this opera, a modified version of this opera, um, as a collaboration between LA Opera and LA Unified High Schools. And it was performed in 2020 um, during the pandemic remotely. And I will also include uh, a link to, to that video. Um, someone has kindly pro uh, provided that as a as an available video on YouTube. So you can also listen and watch uh, a performance. And uh, the performance is a little bit uh, unusual in the sense that uh, they, they had to record everyone separately and then piece it all together. And then they also created um, a graphical component, a, a design component um, to make up for the fact that no one was physically on the stage together um, at the same time. So it feels a little bit like a graphic novel, feels a little bit like, uh, and then the performance is, is digitally stitched together. Um, but uh, that's of a different set sequence that's actually of an entire 22 minute opera. This piece, um, I don't believe appears in the opera exactly as is, um, but is a, a version of, of something that we prepared for the earlier opera, which we haven't finished. All that's a long preamble, but hopefully you bear with me and we, we jump into this. This is in the voice of Ada and is from a piece entitled um, Edge of a Dream. Now the task is done. One man's words rendered in another man's tongue, and I have played my part, yet something feels undone. 
The Signore is wise, a brilliant mind who seems to grasp Babbage's design. Why is it I am still not satisfied? Why does it feel he beholds a simple hill where I see a mountain surrounded by fields? Here, at the edge of a dream, there are no fences, no boundary lines. This machine is more than simple function. I can imagine the reach of its shadow. Signore, can you see? This engine weaves patterns like a loom weaves flowers and leaves. What is this machine but a finely tuned orchestra capable of playing any symphony? Someday it might go beyond number, creating art and musical wonder, transporting us through time and space. Here, at the edge of this dream, I see there are no fetters. This machine can be anything. It can dream my dream. Let me write all that I can imagine. Let my notes spill over like a sea. Flood these pages with reverie. My mind lies revealed here at the edge of my dream. Um, and so that's the text. Uh, the, there's a link as well in the description for a full video of, um, actually, I think I'll even put a link in box on the screen here too, uh, a full video of a recording of a performance of this. And uh, it's, I, I find, deeply moving to hear it sung. Um, and I hope you do as well. Uh, but I also think it's helpful to be able to have access to the words, um, you know, as, as straight text in this format, um, because sometimes we struggle to, to hear distinctly um, all the things that are happening um, in an operatic performance. Um, so anyways, happy Ada Lovelace Day. And uh, here's to all of you, um, especially women who are working in tech uh, working in programming, working someplace where it may be difficult to feel that you belong, but you do. And Ada proves that there is more than enough room um, in the dream for all of us. So um, I uh, encourage you to uh, check out these videos and to celebrate Ada Lovelace Day, um, to encourage those who are pursuing uh, dreams that might seem atypical, might seem outside of what you conventionally might expect them to do, um, don't close those doors. Um, support them and encourage them. Um, and if you yourself are in that position, by all means, chase after that dream. Um, Ada, when she was a child uh, in her notebooks, uh, would draw and speculate about the possibilities of building a steam-powered mechanical flying horse uh, and she never built that, but she was capable of imagining things like that, that she could refer to the analytical engine as a machine that operated on numbers the same way that a loom operates on threads to create these incredible tapestries. And, uh, I, I love that. I, I think, I think you definitely feel that there is the heart of a poet mixed with the heart of a mathematician in the work that she did. And, um, and as someone who used to be a programmer, still kind of programs from here from time to time, um, I find that the two worlds are not so disparate and not so divided. But in fact, at the heart is creativity, imagination, and a vision for something that can only exist at the start in language. But oh, what does it become when it is executed? And put into the world. It becomes something fantastic. So here's to all of you, and uh, here's to Ada Lovelace. Um, if you enjoyed this reading and this poem and uh, this little celebration of Ada Lovelace, please give a like to this video, consider subscribing to this channel, and by all means, um, share these videos around with others. I'm thankful for all of you and for relatively new uh, viewers who have recently subscribed, as well as all of you who have been along for the ride from the beginning, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you're here. And we'll be back again every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday with more videos and more poetry. Uh, until then, take care and stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, keep working and writing and doing those things that you love, creating something, building something, imagining something, all this work, um, one line, one poem at a time to change the world. 
and we'll be back again soon. Until then, take care and goodbye.